games like Assassin's Creed and Mirror's Edge demonstrate the potential application of parkour, especially when combined with other skills. So too do Jackie Chan movies. Being able to put objects between yourself and a pursuer, or being able to quickly navigate over and around obstacles could save your life. At any rate, it's awesome and it gives you greater physical freedom to move and to explore. And it's good for you. Parkour actually shares its roots with functional training and movement training. These are all offshoots of Georges Herbert's natural method. Herbert spoke of the importance of being strong to be useful, and his ideas were adopted by the French military in the form of assault courses, known as le parcours. Huh? Those same ideas were later taught to David Bell by his father, Raymond Bell, who had also served in the French military. Along with Sebastian Foucan, David Bell went on to create the parkour movement as we know it today. You can also augment this skill with specific strength and conditioning. And for those non-tracers, taking some parkour type movements and adapting them into your training can result in a workout that's fun with amazing functional benefits. To devise a parkour workout, we can turn to the ATSP hierarchy I discussed in my book, Functional Training and Beyond. That stands for Attributes, Traits, Skills, Proficiencies. In other words, we break down parkour into its component skills. We then break down the traits they involve, like upper body explosiveness, balance, hip stability. Finally, we can look at the specific physical attributes we need to train, like fast twitch fiber in the lats or strength in the medial glutes. Often this means choosing an exercise that looks similar to the movement. This is specificity. It's also a good idea to focus on explosive movements with a relatively light added resistance up to about 75% of body weight or even just body weight. If we're looking to emulate Assassin's Creed specifically, or the more practical aspects of parkour, we should probably focus on precisions, climb-ups, swing-throughs, tic-tacs, wall runs, vaults, hurdles, breakfalls. The following movements can be added to your training to enhance these abilities. Broad jump. So kicking off, one of the best movements you can use to improve jumping in parkour is the broad jump. So typically when we think of jump training, we tend to focus on verticals. The broad jump is a similar idea, except for you're going forwards. So I guess you could call it a horizontal. Simply by practicing jumping forwards instead of jumping straight up, you slightly change the activation of the muscles involved. So this takes a lot of emphasis off of the knees and it places it on the hips. It's more of a hip hinging movement, also places a great deal of extra emphasis on the ankles. And because you're mimicking that forwards, that horizontal movement and pushing off the ground in that direction actually transfers very well to running speed as well. So it's used by a lot of athletic coaches. I also like this as a movement for non-tracers because it's a hip hinge movement that doesn't involve having a very heavy bar to pick off the ground, which a lot of people don't have access to, especially at the moment. So it's gonna look a lot like a counter movement jump. That means you're dropping down low into a squat. That's the amortization phase. But you're gonna be leaning slightly more forwards as you do, and you're gonna swing the arms backwards. Then you're going to push off and forwards through the balls of the feet, and then you're gonna land and absorb that impact nice and gently by bending the knees and the ankles. And you can use progressive overload and you can monitor your progress here by using two cones or other markers on the ground to measure your distance. And the great thing about this as well is that it allows you to aim for a target. So if you put a towel on the ground, for instance, you can try and land on that smaller surface area. And this is fantastic for improving your precision for precisions. Of course, an easy way to make the movement more difficult is to add a weight vest and that'll add some additional resistance. Another variation that I love is to take a medicine ball and to swing that up from between your legs as you jump. This adds resistance, yes, but at the same time, it also gives you a little bit more momentum as you're moving forwards. It turns the movement even more into a hip hinge, and it's essentially like a, a jumping kettlebell swing, and you can add a slam at the end as well if you want to make the movement more complex. Skipping. Skipping is an incredibly high value movement for training. This improves ankle stiffness, which translates directly to better running speed. Contractions in the calf actually play a minimal role in plantar flexion during running. It's all about those tendons. Even better, it also trains rhythm. Rhythm is an underappreciated component of athletic performance and has many critical roles. Whether it's a fighter trying to break an opponent's rhythm or it's a tracer timing their steps to ensure their good foot is planted just in time to make the leap. Bounding. Speaking of running faster and jumping from one leg, bounding is another incredible tool you can add to your arsenal. Bounding is a popular exercise among athletic coaches that involves leaping from foot to foot to cover as much distance as possible per stride, while staying safe of course. This works a little like shock training with a Verkashansky depth jump, in that you'll be training the myotatic stretch response, leaping back off the ground and returning energy in explosive manner as soon as you come into contact. 
The difference is that you'll be doing this off of a single leg, as you do when you're running or jumping in parkour. This can translate to potentially huge gains in running speed and leaping ability. This can be progressed using cones that show where the feet should be placed. You can also experiment with consecutive hops in different patterns too. And moving from side to side will also improve hip and ankle stability, direction changing and injury prevention. Pistol squats. Pistol squats will improve your single leg strength and stability, your mobility and your balance. Training each side is important to help you become more ambipedal. This is something I didn't really touch on in the last video on ambidexterity. The ability to jump off either leg is a huge advantage when it comes to confidently clearing gaps. Interestingly though, athletes tend to be better at balancing on their non-dominant leg. This makes sense seeing as you balance on that leg to support yourself while using the other leg for more dexterous movements like kicking. Balancing on both legs independently is a quick way to improve your balance for crossing beams and ledges then. Squats. I haven't spoken much about vertical jump training yet, which is because there is far less of that in parkour than we might typically assume. The truth is that most jumping is done from one leg while running, and as JC Santana would say, this is more about energy transfer than production. That said, there are definitely times when a high vertical jump is useful in parkour, and it tends to correlate with many other useful skills. And when it comes to improving jump height, sticking with the classics is often the way to go. The squat absolutely adds inches to verticals, and especially if you keep the focus on bar speed, moving explosively during the concentric portion of the movement. It's also fantastic for bracing the core and teaching lots of good habits. Goblet squat jumps. My favourite movement for improving vertical jump height at the moment though, is the goblet squat jump. Here you simply take a kettlebell or sandbag and hold it in front of you, then jump straight up as high and as explosively as you can. This keeps the movement fast and explosive while also engaging the core. And by putting you in that anti-flexion position as you try and prevent the kettlebell from pulling you forwards, you're also engaging the erector spinae and keeping your core nice and stiff. Kettlebell swings. Kettlebell swings are also a strong option. Yes, the kettlebell squatting swing is a real thing and it develops more ground reaction force than a regular swing. It's not wrong and it won't hurt you. You can also employ the overspeed kettlebell swing technique by swinging the weight back down towards you more forcefully and then absorbing that momentum to return it back to the air. Climb ups. So the climb up is another fundamental movement in parkour that involves running up onto a wall, grabbing the top and then pulling yourself up. This has a number of different variations with the most difficult and impressive and best looking version being the level five climb up. Here you're essentially grabbing onto the wall, pushing yourself straight up in the air and then bringing your legs in between where your hands would have been. So essentially very similar to a muscle up, looks a little bit like a Kong vault, but onto the wall. This is a very difficult movement and very few tracers even can perform it. You're perfectly fine sticking with the level four or level three. I'm not sure what I would be doing. These variations involve kicking off the wall more taking more steps, or alternatively vaulting to the side at the top of the movement. There's a fantastic video about this by Jimmy the Giant, which I highly recommend checking out. His channel is a treasure trove of information, he's like a parkour scholar. Those familiar with their calisthenics will immediately identify this as essentially a muscle up, which it kind of is. So a great way to train this, of course, is by practicing muscle ups. But we can also get even more specific with this by practicing essentially just the climb up. So you can run against a wall and push yourself up, lower yourself down, and then do the same thing again for repetitions. This is something that a lot of tracers do. And in some cases they're able to do like five in 10 seconds, which is amazing. You can even do a variation using a pull-up bar like this. So as you can see in that version, I'm using the wall as a kind of backboard to kick myself up, making the movement more similar to what we would normally be doing. Tactical pull-up. Pavel Satsulin's tactical pull-up. So essentially what this involves is using an overhand pronated grip, as is the case for a pull-up, but instead of putting the thumb underneath like you normally would, you're gonna put the thumb on top. And what that's gonna allow you to do is to then transition the movement into the push. It's a bit like the false grip that you see in ring pull-ups, but it's also a lot more like real life. If you're holding onto a wall or a window ledge, you don't have anything to get your thumb under most of the time. So if you're gonna pull yourself up, you need to use that overhand grip. And Pavel recommends doing this with a tight core using a kind of hollow body contracted abs for repetitions. And this is a great way to not only build grip strength, but also to build the exactly correct pulling muscles that you're gonna to need to mount onto things and climb up things. 
Just as a point of interest, notice how different this is from the way that Edu Portal performs a pull-up. His perfect pull-up involves bringing his chest back and pulling the bar all the way up to the sternum. And the idea behind this, of course, is to increase range of motion and the challenge, and he does it in a very slow and controlled way. Just goes to show that there's no right and wrong way to do a movement. It all depends on the results that you're interested in chasing. Rope climbs. I also recommend throwing in some rope climbs. Not only is this a little like climbing a vertical pipe or lamppost, but it also toughens up the grip like nobody's business. Tough hands can be a huge asset for someone climbing onto walls all day. Dips. I do recommend some weighted dips, perhaps on gymnastics rings, to build that pushing strength. Here we're breaking the movement of the climb up down into its constituents and strengthening the chest and triceps with isolated repetitions. Crawls. Another movement that should be a staple of any parkour conditioning program, something I've talked about a lot recently, you probably saw it coming, is quadrupedal movements, crawls, things like the bear crawl or the lizard crawl. The bear crawl is actually used in parkour to move along beams and walls and things, and it's a fantastic tool for building your proprioception and your body awareness because you're moving the limbs in a asynchronous manner across the two hemispheres. And if you want to learn more about that, then check out my video that I uploaded recently on that topic. But either way, improving your body awareness is crucial in parkour, especially when it comes to spotting your landing whilst you're spinning through the air. At the same time, like I say, you can actually use this to tie together different movements. It's a fantastic way to train the core for anti-rotation. And you can make it more difficult by wearing a weight vest, by moving to the lizard crawl, which is closer to the ground and involves more of a sweeping movement with the arms and the legs for better mobility, hip mobility in particular. You can even drag a sled, which involves digging into the ground at that horizontal angle again, fantastic for the quads and for building speed and power, whether you're running or jumping to cross a gap. Whilst I'm on the subject of locomotive movements and crawls, it'll be remiss of me not to mention the ground kong, also known as the forwards traveling ape in animal flow or Frogger in GMB Fitness, and what you're essentially doing here is a Kong vault, but on the ground. And to do this, you place your hands on the ground in front of you, and then you jump forwards to bring your knees and your legs in the middle to place your feet down. Of course, this is a fantastic mobility exercise that helps build your resting squat, which is really useful for absorbing impacts and also improving your jump. At the same time, it can be used to condition the chest and shoulders and triceps if you use it for higher volume or with a weight vest, etc. Cartwheels. Speaking of body awareness, which is crucial for a tracer trying to land a jump in a balanced position, performing some form of tumbling or acrobatics is also a great option. Too few of us spend any time upside down or rapidly rotating, but this has a ton of benefits for cognition, agility, explosive strength, and more. Cartwheels are one option as they are easy and fun to perform. Mine are ugly and unstraight, but I do them anyway. They also serve as a brilliant first progression that can get you towards more impressive aerial skills, like the aerial or the side flip, or so I'm told. Or you can practice other movements like the kip-up, handspring or breakfall for reps. Hollow body rocks. Core training is critical, as a strong core is fundamental to all athletic performance. I've quoted Dr Stuart McGill on this channel countless times saying, proximal stiffness enhances distal athleticism. What this means is that you need a strong and stiff core to produce force from your limbs. Hollow body rocks are a movement borrowed from gymnastics and involve contracting the core and then rocking the body forward and backwards. La Land Push-Up. Of course, there are many more awesome anti-extension movements you can use too, such as my favorite, the La Land Push-Up. Check out my various videos on core and back training to see more suggestions for anti-flexion and anti-rotation too. running. So perhaps obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do this, is to just run. Run long distances to build up your endurance, your cardio, but also the stabilizing and supporting muscles in the hips and in the core that you utilize when you're running long distances and when you're tired. Because even though parkour will often be done in a single spot, it does involve a lot of running. And if you're tired from practicing lots of jumps, that's when injuries and accidents can happen. So you want to build up good running form through lots and lots of repetition. It should go without saying that all of these really explosive movements should be practiced with caution. So anything that involves jumping on one leg or jumping a distance with a weight, all this involves a lot of impact on the knees and the joints in general. So you need to 
make sure you're confident with your air squat and with your one-legged squats before you build up to this. Otherwise, those high impacts can cause some serious damage. The thing to keep in mind when you're training is the type of tracer you want to be. What kind of movement are you trying to achieve? Are you into the graceful flowing movements? If so, you may prefer to focus more on mobility and movement training. Alternatively, you might be more partial to big jumps, fast movements and straight lines. If that's the case, you should focus more on athletic movements that build explosiveness and stiffness. Or maybe you want to do something creative and new. Whatever the case, you start to design the movement by first designing your strength and performance. The creative expression ultimately ends up on film, but it starts when you begin devising your training plan. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever experimented with parkour and whether you think that maybe some of the ideas from free running can be applied to your training. If you want to learn more about functional training, then you can either check out my physical print book, Functional Training and Beyond, which is a kind of introduction to the whole subject and that takes you through the history of functional training, or you can read my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. That goes into a huge amount of detail about different forms of training for the brain, for mobility, for strength and conditioning. And it provides a program at the end that you can use to train all of these things at once. Subscribe if you want more like this and hit the bell button if you want to be notified of new uploads. Whatever the case, thanks so much for watching this one, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.